So you've gone to the previous videos, you checked all your weak cores, you checked all your add-ons, and you pretty much optimized as much as you can there, because that's where you're gonna get the most FPS back, believe me. But you still have low FPS. Maybe you're on some really low end PC or Mac, and you just need to squeeze the most you can out of your graphics settings themselves because you've already called your add-ons and weak cores, or you're just running none and your frames are still in the dumpster. So this video is going to go into the graphic settings and it's going to go in deeper dive than most other videos and articles because I have intimate knowledge of the engine and what certain settings actually do. So when I know what, what, when I'm turning, well, I'm actually turning on and off and what it does and how it benefits you. So I'm hoping I can break things down a bit clearer than some others have in the past, as well as maybe show you new tricks or tell you some old tricks that people told you that were actually bad advice, which I'm going to get into as well. So to start off, I'm going to show you my graphics settings here. Now, I'm on a MacBook Pro with an M3 Max chip, which is pretty beasty. So I'm actually sitting here in Dornigal at 4K... Oops, hold on. Full screen, okay. 4K native resolution, 100% render scale, max everything, max settings. And I'm in a perp I'm in purposely in a CPU bound area to where my FPS is dropping, not actually because of the GPU, but because the CPU. And it's more egregious than normal because I'm also using the CPU as my encoder into GPU because I'm doing graphics benchmarks. I don't want to have the encoder sucking up GPU. Granted, it still uses about 20 or 30 percent of it, even when you're not using it as an encoder. But the point is, these frames aren't even my normal frames. They're actually lower because I'm doing encoding on the same machine in OBS. But here, this is pretty much the most CPU-bound area in Dornigold, because it's full of players, and players are bad. And on top of that, I have friendly name plates on, which makes players suck up CPU a bit. If I turn those off, I'll gain about 5 frames, give or take. Because uh, friendly name plates can suck up uh, performance. Although the frames are going to be inconsistent because people are moving around and going in and out of frame constantly, but that's the one thing too for the raid. If you're playing with friendly nameplates, turn them off. If unless you really, really need them, because they're perform they're performance hog, and that's more to do with uh, buff tracking and and this that and the other. They're not as much of a performance mode or issue when they're just uh, name only. Which, by the way, this is something Blizzard should address. You want to know why most people use friendly nameplates? Because these suck ass. The font is unreadable. I can't even see this person's name when they're right in front of me. Unless I actually zoom in on it. That shouldn't be the case. No class color is nothing. Do this. I can see everyone's name, class color. Suddenly there's clarity of my environment. This should be a base game feature. Just saying, Blizzard. And then you wouldn't have to use uh, performance sucking add-ons to do it instead. But anyways... Off that tangent, I'm going to go into the graphics settings here and show you the settings that matter the most. For uh, graphics intensity, I want to say one thing that's pretty clear. When you're CPU bound like where I am right here, I can actually turn many settings down and the impact will be mi minuscule because it's not CPU issue. Like I can, There's actually a command that most people don't know about. It's called GX frame stats. If you run it, it tells you if you're GPU bound. I'm not GPU bound. Right here, I'm CPU bound. My GPU is waiting for work, and the CPU is not giving it fast enough. Because one, one sad reality about the engine is it really sucks when you're in a crowded area. No matter how good your graphics card is, you're going to have frame drops because of this. Which sadly also means raids are going to have the same problem. Which means CPU really is king when it comes to rating and PvP because the CPU carries the most bottleneck of the burden. Now I'm moving away from the player area. Even though the core way is usable. And I'm gonna start getting into GPU bound territory. Work and rubble clearing but it's gonna be pretty bad here because I'm purposely going near water. Because now we're gonna go over GPU settings. Like the main thing about this video, graphic settings are gonna be mostly about making sure you're not GPU bound. CPU bound, there's not much you can do because there's not many, many settings that reduce load on the CPU, which is really a problem. So ultimately you just need the best CPU possible. 
and then just make sure your GPU is not uh, over tasked and and kept busy. But here, I'm not I'm not going to be CPU bound. I'm going to be like purely GPU bound. And right here, like I said, I'm being pretty aggressive on purpose. Uh, 4K native while doing encoding on a laptop. So I'm showing you pretty much worst case scenario on this hardware, which is actually not bad considering. But let's dive right into the graphics settings. The number one graphics setting that gives you the most performance is also the most broken, which is actually another serious engine problem. Again, this video is going to talk about engine problems. Render scale is probably the best setting of all for getting performance, and it's broken for about half the users because there's a bug right now on Windows. Not all Windows hardware, just specific hardware configurations to where if this is anything under 100%, it actually drops your performance more. So the first thing you need to check with is if we can get performance with render scale. Here, I'm going to go, okay, let's try 75. My FPS just shot up to 80. But if you're shot down, you're experiencing the bug. So you know right away, do you have the bug? If so, this should be 100 and nothing else. And you're just stuck with not being able to use the most, best way to get your performance back because Blizzard's engine's broken, which hopefully they fix it because it's really, really good that you can use render scale. Now, why is render scale good? Because render scale activates this technology down here. Fidelity super resolution, which again, is not selected by default. If you're gonna use a render scale below 100, you should change this to FSR, which is what it's called for short. Now, sadly, World of Warcraft uses FSR 1.0 because they don't support temporal rendering. Now, what's temporal rendering? That's the technique that's used for more modern technologies like FSR 2, FSR 3, DLSS, XESS, and probably even Pisser on PlayStation 5 Pro is probably going to be temporal based. But the WoW engine is too old, doesn't support temporal rendering. So they have, they're using spatial rendering, which is less accurate and only supports FSR 1.0. But nonetheless, it's still a great way to achieve performance. I want 80 FPS, and all I did was lower my base resolution here to 620p, which basically translates to it's rendering the game at 620p and using FSR to upscale it to your output resolution. The output resolution should always match your monitor resolution. If it doesn't, you're making the game a blurry mess because it's, because it's going to use weird scaling and it's just going to look bad. Don't save performance here. Save performance here if you can. And hope that you can because it's the biggest saver. I can go even further. I can go like 50. Now I just gain 20 more FPS. And look at the world. The world still looks pretty much just as crisp as it did before. Now the thing with FSR 1.0 is you're going to lose some fine detail around grass and shrubbery. And while moving, it's going to, it's going to shimmer. The shimmering is a known artifact of FSR. But in RAID, that doesn't matter. What matters the most is FPS. And this is going to be the number one way to get performance because resolution is where the most cost is. Especially if you're on a 1440p or like me, 4, 4K monitor, then rendering native is a huge, huge performance cost. And that's where it matters. Another thing, people often miss this because people go right here to graphics. They move this slider around. They're like, Oop. Let's turn this slider. This slider does not touch these settings up here. And it's emphasize again. If you come in here and you're thinking, oh, I've turned my graphics settings to a one. Why is my performance still bad? Maybe you're still rendering at 4K native. Or maybe something even more egregious happened. Maybe at some point you accidentally clicked here. I just dumpstered my FPS to 20. Why is that? Because I'm rendering at 8K resolution. I'm literally rendering the game at 8K and then downscaling it to 4K. The game will look hella crisp, but now it looks like I'm playing on a Nintendo Switch because I have 20 FPS. You don't want a, a World of Warcraft is uh let's just say there's a reason it's not a Nintendo Switch. It's not meant to be played at 20 FPS. So uh one thing you should you could check, like maybe you've accidentally clicked up here. You don't want the render scale. Pretty much higher than 100 unless you're at a beast or maybe you're at a, you have only have a 1080p monitor to which case you could do what's called super sampling where at 10 uh 1080p monitor you can turn the render scale up because then 
the 200 percent is basically only rendering at 4k or we can go like 150 or so and it would be like 1440p then then downscaled to 1080p but basically that's what render scale is and that's probably the biggest biggest performance gainer of all but i'm going to send you one thing about render scale uh the quality gets worse the lower the base pixels and a rule of thumb is the base pixels should never go under 1080p so for example if you're on a 1080p monitor render scale might give you performance but it's going to look like crap because you're not at a point you can't upscale from low pixels you can't upscale from like 540p to 1080p and have it look good because at a point you're using too few pixels and it's going to look really really terrible and I sit, this might even look terrible. It might gain even more performance. But at this point, the grass is blurry. It's shimmering all to no end. It looks terrible. You really don't want to go that low because now the game is going to look overly softened and pixelated because it's not, it doesn't have enough pixel count for upscaling. I'd say the lowest you want to go is 50, and that's only if you're on a 4K monitor. If you're on a 1440p monitor, just watch this number and try to keep this above 1080p so you can kind of keep that uh sharpness and reduce the shimmer as much as possible but that's fsr and render scale i spent the most time on this video on that because that's where you're gonna get the most performance if you can if you're running on those bug machines where it actually tanks your fps believe me i'm gonna be uh pressuring uh people i know to say hey can you please, please fix this bug? This bug is a really bad bug because you're keeping people from getting performance they need in game. So now I'm going to go into other options that are big. The next one that's probably pretty huge, but it depends on where you are, is liquid. And that's because screen space reflections take everything that's above the wa uh, water and render it again. Like these mountains are being rendered twice. And it's pretty exponential too. Like, so if you're on like a 4K resolution, this is being rendered at 4K, and this mountain is being rendered again at 4K down here. So it could actually ha hurt you more the higher your resolution. But one thing you could do for liquid is drop it down even so much as good because it disables environmental reflections. My FPS shot way up by removing the reflections of the environment on water. Now, good still keeps the artistic intent of the water. The water still looks Good, it just doesn't reflect the environment anymore. Not objects aren't reflected, but the water itself still has a nice natural water look. If you take water any lower than good, that's when it starts looking bad. If you turn it to fair, now the water has unnatural transparency because the actual shimmer on top of the surface has been disabled. It's kind of cool. In a sense that, like, you get to see the most. Like, I, I see classic players do this a lot. They actually purposely lose, use lower water quality so they can actually see the bottom. Like, if you if if you if you're a player that wants to see everything, as opposed to having everything look natural, then fair water is actually pretty cool because now you can see. I can see the bottom of this ocean with such crystal clarity. This is clear water. It's unnatural, but it's clear. And it gave me a bit more performance too than good. Like if you really look on for maximum performance, you could go good. Low is this really isn't necessary. Unless you just prefer that artistic style. Fair and low should have pretty similar performance. But I like to go with good. Because the performance trade-off is not as significant as say you're going back to high, which is like bam. Now I'm just dumpstering the FPS because. It's, it's basically having to render the entire environment two times over. And that is a significant performance sync. That's why it's the second most powerful option to turn down. But one thing about this option is if there's no liquid on the screen at all, hold on. Yeah, here, I got the liquid off the screen. The FPS just went back up. The FPS will shoot back up. So you can still have liquid high for like maybe outdoors you want maximum fidelity. But like in raids, because you're not near bodies of water most of the time anyway, 
it doesn't affect performance as long as there's no liquid on screen. But remember, liquid also counts tar pits, lava. And there is a little bit of liquid in the raid currently. Like little reddish puddles of goo. So it's uh, to be considered that the option probably will have an impact in the current raid, but it won't have an impact in all raids. But nonetheless, it's definitely worth noting, especially trying to get more performance out of raids too. Now, Mac OS has a, a issue. You turn VSync off, the driver might destabilize and when mom, mom might start crashing. And Windows users actually have a tendency to turn VSync off so they can maximize the use of FreeSync and G-Sync via their video driver instead, which is actually superior, which is another setting I want to just briefly touch on. Vertical Sync, if you have G-Sync or FreeSync, you generally want to turn this off. If you're on Mac OS, you never want to turn this off because it might destabilize the game. It causes freezing, hitching, weird frame pacing, and it might even cause the system to reboot. Is there's a bug in the metal driver that makes the game crash if VSync is off. I've actually tried to suggest Blizzard hide this option on Mac OS for that reason, because it's a bait option. It could lead to user bad situation by having it on the wrong setting, but anti-aliasing. Now these are low performance ones that I like to use because I'm on a 4K monitor. When you're on a 4K monitor, you don't need as much anti-aliasing because you're already using a high, uh, you already have less pixel edges. But unlike a uh, lower resolution, you might want to use MSAA or super sampling as I covered. But MSA is more expensive, so if you're really if you're trying to get performance, you want to have this off. Now on Windows, this goes up to 8x. But due to a bug or a bug in the Mac OS driver and hardware. MSAA can't go above 4 or the driver destabilizes. Apple things. That's why it's capped at 4x by Blizzard. But I tend to use CMAA just because it's very lightweight. Like, quick pass over the engine. Like, I'll turn it off. I don't really gain FPS, really, because it's not really a performance cost to begin with. Or it, it is, but it's a trivial performance cost on at least higher end hardware. Now, as the hardware scales down lower and lower and lower, then trivial becomes less trivial, obviously. But CMA2 is pretty good for anti-aliasing when you want to be low cost. Now, why is CMA1 and 2 here? I don't really know why Blizzard did that. Basically, 2 supersedes 1 on all levels. You just don't want to use 1, like, ever. You just kind of added 2 without removing 1. A specific, our particular thing is CMA1 doesn't support working correctly when you're using a non-100% render scale. CMA2 does. Okay, the next one. Shadow quality. That's another big one. Let's try and turn the shadows off. I'm going to go low. There was a gain. But again, I think I'm actually still mostly CPU bound here. Mostly because I'm I'm doing the encoder. As a fact, if I was actually doing this without recording a video, I'd probably see a bigger difference in FPS with these graphics settings because it'd be less CPU bound. But play with graphics or the shadow quality and see what it gets you. But I'm going to add an emphasis here that disagrees with other uh, content creators and people who have posted about shadows. People have said to put shadows on low instead of fair because it gives you more performance than fair. Yes and no. It gives you more performance as long as you're not triggering any bugs, but there's some huge caveats with this shadow mode that need to be acknowledged that can actually cause performance issues to arise as opposed to gaining performance. I'm going to land on this rock here. Notice how I'm not casting a shadow on the rock, but I am casting a blob shadow. Let's zoom in a bit on this grass. That's because blob shadows can, are, are, haven't been, they basically, it's old code from pre-cataclysm. Consider that for a moment. If you turn shadows to low, you're trusting code that's over 15 years old to be stable. And it's not that stable. And that's where the issue is why using, I don't recommend using shadows on low. Shadows on low can't render on anything but the ground. They can't render on elevators. They can't render on platforms. They can't render on rocks. They can't render on destructible uh environment things 
And a lot of encounters use those things. Why is this a problem? Because if you're standing on something that's not the ground, the game is trying to resolve where to cast a shadow and it can't figure it out. And it can actually cause performance issues. There was actually, uh, it was actually well documented that during Mist of Pandaria, if your shadows were on low instead of fair, in Primordius's room, the room above Radin, your FPS would dumpster because it was trying to render the shadows in Radin's room underneath the floor as opposed to the room you were standing in because it was trying to render the shadows on the floor, not on the platform that's uh, a destructible object, basically. And that's where there's a performance issue coming from low shadows. But that's not the only issue with using low shadows. There's another issue, and that's encounter mechanics. I've heard people say, you don't need fair shadows because they, uh, they don't impact you from seeing raid mechanics. The hell they don't. How many fights have you had a tentacle that come up from behind us that casts a shadow in the environment so you know where it is? Well, it's not going to cast that shadow if your shadows are on low. You need fair or higher because these are real shadows that work on all surfaces, for one. I have a shadow on this rock now. And you need to be able to see environment details like something coming from behind you, like a giant tentacle that's about to smack you and one-shot you, like Nazoth, like a Volacross. And, I mean, this is also a hentai expansion. How many damn tentacles are trying to go up your asshole while you're playing in, in dungeons? But frankly, shadows should never be on low. That's a bad tip that people have given. And I'm going to correct that tip here in this video. Shadows should be on fair. Even if low does give you an FPS boost, it's just, it's risky. It might give you an FPS in some situations, it might lower your FPS in others. And it's definitely not going to help you see on counter mechanics that are coming from outside your field of view or even from above. Like, it's actually useful for above too. Like a big thing about encounters from above too, sometimes maybe a dragon's flying overhead. You need to see where that dragon is or where ads are coming in and you know, see, see them landing. The shadows help you see them incoming before you see them on your screen. It's a huge asset to have shadows in this game. And that's why my official rating for shadow quality for rating and dungeons is fair. Stay away from low. Now, SSAO, or Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, is when shadows are basically generated by an algorithm between objects or a shaded area. Like, so the best place to show you right here is this tree. All these deep shadows that are in between the leaves or ambient occlusion. And I'm going to turn that off now. And you're going to see the difference in the tree and if it gains any performance for a second. But I gained maybe 10 frames. And the environment lost some depth of shadow compared to... Now this one, this specific tree has some fake shadows, which artists will do sometimes too. They won't rely on the algorithm to fill in shadows. Ambient occlusion back on. It tries... Yeah, these bushes definitely show up more. These bushes aren't using fake shadows. It's all the algorithm. But that's what you lose turning that off. But one thing about that is you can safely turn it off completely or it down, and it has no caveats. It has no button bugs for turning it off like low, or low shadows does. And there's no encounter mechanics that it helps you see better. It just uh, helps add more depth to the environment. Depth effects. Depth effects, I have, I have not found it to have really any impact whatsoever on performance in most areas. Like, it's not really doing anything, turning it on and off. Like, especially in raids, because it's really, it, it really affects graphical details. They aren't really used in raids. And this is like an old, old technology that's been around since Cataclysm. It's not really performance heavy. Now this one, this one is extremely, extremely performance heavy. But one thing about this one is it's rarely used in raid. In fact, it's rarely used in the game in general. If I turn it off here, it's not going to make a lick of difference because there's no volumetric fog or effects here. What compute effects handles is volumetric effects like the polluted air in Mechagon 
some of the misty air in uh, Arden Wield. And there's some kind of there's some fog effects that are used in the Emerald Dream in the most recent expansion. There were some fog effects used in, in the Maw and Torghast where it was used. But for the most part, unless it's actually in front of you or on your screen, this has no bearing on performance. But if it is on your screen, this will tank FPS. Like even on my computer, it tanks FPS because this is actually this is actually a very CPU bound effect, and I need to emphasize that. If you're trying to save on your CPU, turn this off. It's very CPU bound, not just GPU bound. Because it uses compute, and that requires, you know, algorithmic calculations and such, and it has to do it all on the GPU. Compute-based. I can't, I can't point the text, but I, I, I recommend keeping this off. Outline mode. I don't really know why this is here. I think there are certain GPUs, like really, really low-end GPUs, like Intel integrated GPUs, where this affected performance. But realistically, like any GPU that's not a toaster have no performance impact on this all this does is outline like quest objects or npcs that you're hovering your mouse over etc like all that does is creates that highlight glow like see that those yellow lines that are on this mob when i'm i'm hovering over it not mob but butterfly that's what that does that's that's outline and that helps show you where your cursor is pointing or where quest objects are you pretty much want to leave that on just for being able to identify your environment better. And because it really has no performance impact at all. Like I said, pretty much only turn this off if you're on like a toaster from like 2010 or something. Again, it's not something that really gives you much. Texture resolution is kind of a bait too, because you think similar to like resolution up here, you should turn it down because it will save performance. Not really. Not unless you have a video card that only has like four gig gigabytes of VRAM or like less. Again, maybe it's an IG IGPU or something or a very extremely low end spec. Then maybe turning this down will help reduce stuttering if you're hitting VRAM limits because your texture uh, cache is full, all your VRAM is full. So it's having to constantly shuffle assets out of VRAM and back into VRAM. That's where this much still gain. But for the most part, Reducing texture resolution, I haven't found to have any impact besides making the game look like crap. But you can still try it. You know, it's all hardware dependent. But I'm speaking basically on if your machine's like 2016 or later, it really shouldn't have a huge impact. Unless you bought a 2016, you know, MacBook that had four gigabytes of RAM and VRAM. <laughs> but otherwise, that yeah. this can help a pretty significant amount because it reduces uh, player clutter. Most people will say reduce the essential or some, but there's a caveat here to how much it helps because one thing Blizzard has said in interviews and also people I've talked to directly, the reason why you can set this to essential where you're only supposed to see your own spells, you still see tons of other spells anyway. It's because Blizzard manually flags many AOE effects as essential, even if they're not player spells, because they have a philosophy that they have stated that they don't want tanks to be unable to see where they need to tank mobs. Like they basically said, even though I have essential and it says you're only going to see your own spells, you're still going to see the mage AOE. You're still going to see the death and decay from the death knight. And the reason being because they feel like if the tank can't see that, they're going to pull mobs out of it and piss off other players. I get where they're coming from with this, but at the same time, it's also not a tank's uh, prerogative to just run around in circles kiting mobs in a Mythic Plus, unless they have a tank, unless there's a literal survival reason too. So it's like, if a tank's constantly pulling stuff out of your AoE, it's probably not because they can't see it, it's probably because they have no choice. Mo most decent tanks know better than to move mobs around willy-nilly. So I, the Blizzard's argument that they have to make performance worse or make the clutter worse, like spell clutter in general, spell noise so you can't see mechanics because the tank needs to see it, is kind of an annoyance to me. I feel like they should change that philosophy a bit and make this actually do what it says it does because in a lot of cases it doesn't. It's worth trying to get performance and a lot of play, people will tell you, turn this down, but I'm going to tell you that it doesn't work as well as it 
should because of the amount of flags that, or spells that they flag essential regardless of what this says. But a cool feature this has is if you set the dynamic, and then you go down here to target FPS and say this is at 60. One thing it will try to do is uh, call spells based on your performance rather than your preference. So like if you're below 60 FPS, it'll start hiding spells. If you're above it, it'll show everything. But again, the caveat is it will never hide flags flagged essential. So again, it has limited usefulness. I want to go over when I skipped. Particle density. This is similar to the other one, but this one actually is more uh, prominent and helpful because this doesn't care if the flags are spelled or uh, essential or not. This just redu this doesn't like determine whether it's shown or hidden completely. It's not an on and off toggle like that one is. This one is the density of it, how many particles it has. And turning this down can significantly improve in performance in raids. But you're not going to notice performance improvement like here. You're not going to notice it performance because there are no particles on my screen in the first place. There's no spells going off. There's no fires. There's nothing going on. So this thing will have no impact here. But this is probably one that'll have a big impact in raids if you're GPU bound. And I state that again, if you're GPU bound. If you're CPU bound, you're going to be one of those users who say, it doesn't matter if my graphics are on 10 or 1, my FPS still sucks. That means you're CPU bound. And there's almost nothing you can do about it besides close other programs, you know, upgrade your PC. And that's about it. And that's really kind of a fault of the engine because the engine, they've done a lot of work in multi threading, but mostly on the graphics tasks. Graphics rendering is way more multi-threaded than it ever was in the past, especially in uh, Battle for Azeroth and later, and Legion and later. Both those expansions did most of the multi-threading work on the graphics thing. But operations that are still CPU-bound, like add-ons that run on top of the graphics thread, or network code, and other code, it's so CPU-bound that uh, that's where the game, game's biggest bottlenecks are, and there's very little you can do about it, even in settings. Just why I say when you're buying a new PC, CPU, CPU, CPU. Like, uh, especially because it's more annoying to swap later. If you're, if you're building a new PC and WoW is your main game, max that CPU to the brim. And then consider the GPU, because graphics settings you can turn down. But CPU, things that bog down the CPU, you can't really turn it down. I can't go in a raid and say, hey, this rate is 30 players. Can I just hit this drop down menu and change it to 10 players? Nope. I mean, you can if you're the raid leader, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying. In Mythic Raid, you can't do that at all. You're 20 players, no buts about it. So, CPU, CPU, CPU when it comes to hardware to mitigate this issue. Now, these I'm going to go over because they're a big deal if you're outdoors. And I'm going to emphasize one thing about. These, these won't have much impact in a raid if the raid is hallways and uh, rooms. Because game engines have what, what you call like cooling to where like if there's walls, all, like four walls all around me, what the engine will do is because you can't see what's behind the walls, it will cool everything behind them. Like it'll actually de-render everything except for what you can actually see in the scope of your camera. So like whether your view distance is like one or 10, usually it won't have impacts if you're fighting in a boss room. But if you're fighting in a place like say you're fighting Zul, which was notoriously bad for performance because he was in the middle of the raid that had a large area around it where you can see in all directions. And it was a huge scope of view distance. And that's when turning view distance down can help have a big impact. And I've done some testing inside the, the new raid, and view distance has some impact, but not as much, because that raid actually uses some clever tech that you probably don't realize, and that's uh, the areas you can't get to. It looks like you can see real far in the distance, but it's actually fake two-dimensional backdrops, similar to how uh, the destroyed tree of Teldrassil was actually a 2D image dropped in the backdrop because there was an invisible wall that prevented you from flying to it, so they didn't have to use real assets. Or other areas like the crystal around Belladar, like where the invisible wall ends and stuff. Sometimes objects at a distance can either be a extremely low poly count or just 
fake altogether. Now here it's real because it's not there's no invisible wall but like in the raid. The few distance doesn't have that much of an impact as much as I thought it would. I was comparing 10 to 1 and gaining very few frames because most of the raid uses fake uh, backgrounds. That said, it's, it's still something you should definitely try to turn down. And it definitely has an impact outdoors. And I'd say what might have a bigger impact is actually environmental detail than view distance because environmental detail is like doodads. Like how, how far in a distance is it going to show like rocks on the ground and things like that. And well, ground clutter is mostly rocks. Excuse me, but environmental detail be like fences and other doodads. For, uh, like the further, further these render, the more performance cost it has because it's rendering details in an environment that it wouldn't be doing otherwise. And view distance is obviously what you call far clip. It's how far in, into the distance you can see before it starts clipping it. And uh, using fog of war to hide it. But view distance is a good one to do, but mostly for outdoors. It won't, in fact, it won't impact most raids, just certain raid situations that are outdoors and aren't using uh, fake backgrounds. Now I want to cover projected textures. Never disable this if you're in a raid or dungeon. Disable this will make you unable to see many boss mechanics. And it won't really, it might gain you performance, but Performance doesn't help you if you're dying to fire on the ground you can't see. So it's one of those things where the trade-off is too great to mess with it. Now here's where we get into this, the fancy options. I've seen people talk about turning this down. And I'm going to tell you a secret about this option. It should never be turned down, ever, in any game. If you're on a computer that's like, even remotely modern. This has been a gold standard, 16x antistropic, or I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I'm sure you'll comment in the comments about my modal mispronunciation. Anyways, this, turning this down does not gain you any performance, like, at all. Like, really? It just doesn't. It just makes the game look worse, especially at an angle. This one, however. Obviously, if you're having performance issues, absolutely do not be using ray trace shadows. Have this disabled. And ironically, it's disabled on Mac OS, not because it's unsupported by Apple, but because it's unsupported by Blizzard. Now this, this controls what kind of screen space ambient occlusion is used. So if, this, if you already disabled this, then this doesn't matter at all. But if you have ambient occlusion enabled, you generally want to have this on auto detect. I have it on Fidelity uh, FX because uh, the AMD version of it actually does look a little bit better than the Intel version. And it also performs a little bit better on Macs. But there's some caveats here and why I recommend the audio if you don't know better. And that's Blizzard has told me internally that. Uh, this is this is obviously an AMD technology, and it's optimized for AMD GPUs. If you have an AMD GPU, this version of ambient occlusion runs much better than this version. Period. If you're on an AMD GPU, you should be using this. But there's a caveat. I was told some NVIDIA GPUs and pretty much all Intel integrated GPUs have worse performance using this over this. Now I say that oh, it's only some NVIDIA GPUs, basically on the lower end. I'm talking like the ones that are just a step above, like an integrated GPU, the kind you find in a laptop, should be using this because this will have a performance impact. Or they might most likely won't be using either one of them because they'll have ambient occlusion off. But if you have ambient occlusion on and it's low end hardware, you use this, especially Intel, because guess who made this technology? Intel. Guess who made this one? AMD. Is it really surprised this one runs better on Intel and this one runs better on AMD? I mean, come on now. But that's pretty much what this is. This one. This one can actually can save performance, but it's very hacky. VRS, or variable rate shading, is a technology to where it uh, reduces visual quality, 
by using less pixels to render something in a weird manner. Now, this doesn't actually work on Mac OS, so I can't actually show you performance gains. But the gains are very trivial from what I've seen on Windows. And it can actually cause weird artifacts, especially around edges. Because the way this works is like, say uh, that edge, that particular edge or pick or area that's being rendered is using four pixels. Well, variable rate shading will just do some hacky thing to where it takes one of those pixels and changes it. So it only using three pixels instead. So thus, in theory, reducing the, reducing the render cost by 25% of areas that it's applied. But VRS isn't applied to like the whole scene. It's an algorithm-based thing to where it only applies to certain things that it can get away with. Because you obviously can't just reduce pixel count everywhere and not notice it. VRS tries to use an algorithm to where it, try, it, it takes away pixels from areas that it doesn't think you're going to notice. But it's not always accurate in doing so. You might notice it, is what I'm, is what I'm saying. But if you're, if you're desperate for performance, turning VRS on might help. Now, Graphics API. With the new expansion, they reworked this menu to no longer be able to let you choose between Metal and Metal Legacy, or on Windows, DX11 and DX12. But they forgot to remove the menu. Like, I talked to the uh, person in the engine team, and they actually meant to remove this menu because it's deprecated. It literally does nothing right now. Auto Detect First Metal doesn't do anything. On Windows, it probably says DX12 or Auto. It doesn't do anything. Player Physics? This is probably one of the only CPU-bound options that you actually have control over, and it should be set to Player Only. If this is set to Player and NPC, it can have a huge performance impact in raids, and that's why you want this set to Player Only. It can have an impact in towns, too, or any area where there's physics from players walking through grass and such. Basically. Physics interactions, what does that mean? See how these flowers move when I'm walking through them? That's physics interactions. That's what, that's what that graphic setting does. It makes the environment react to your player moving through the physics. And if, you, if it's doing that for every player or NPC on the screen, you can see how that'd be a cumulative disaster. I'm not sure if it actually affects other players or not, but affecting NPCs would be bad. Especially if there's like NPCs on the screen, like a city, or a bunch of eggs that just hatched. So yeah, that should be set to player only. Graphics card. This is only relevant if you have a multi-GPU system. Like a laptop, some laptops have like an integrated GPU and a dedicated GPU. If that's the case, all the tech should work usually, but sometimes it's uh, quirky and actually chooses the low power GPU over the high power one. Now this is actually mis misleading because the way the way they have the engine coded, it always writes low power next to an integrated GPU, and Apple Silicon pretty much reports as an integrated GPU, so it says low power even though it's actually not a low power. I'm literally standing here at like 75 FPS, unlike ultra settings, so it's not low power, but it's Reported as low power because it's integrated. It's a unified GPU architecture. Now these settings. These really depend specifically on your hardware. Mac users will most likely be using these. But Windows users often recommend to turn these off. And let the driver control FPS caps instead. Like let, let vSync control it. Or let, let FreeSync. Let G-Sync control it. Let the NVIDIA or AMD control panel control it instead because they have better control over it, it's more accurate. And enabling this too will cause conflicts to where they're both fighting over control over the, it and actually can cause performance issues. If you're on Windows, it's actually recommended to turn maximum foreground FPS off if NVIDIA or AMD are controlling it. Now, if you, for some reason, you've disabled their control over it, then you might want to enable this one. I do kind of recommend our background deep or DPS, no. I do recommend enabling max background for our FPS because it's helpful in saving performance when you tab out. Like basically what this does is I'll tab out a file right now and you're gonna see my FPS drop down to eight. This is useful if you're gonna tab out to like look something up on Wowhead or if you're a multi-boxer like I do sometimes where I'll have two Wow clients open. The way we get away with this with such high graphics settings is because at no time are both files actually trying to render 
at high frame rates at the same time. Whatever WoW is in front is getting the performance, and the one in the background is saving performance by turning the frames down to 8. If I click back into the game, it goes back up. That's a useful feature when it comes to uh, people who have a reason to tab out a lot. And when they tab out, they want that performance. Almost they're tabbing too, not being wasted in a game that you can't even see. Target FPS, I explained this. This is only used by one option in the entire game, which seems weird. Why have a, why have a feature that has almost no usefulness? Well, it was actually implemented because they were, at, they were working on multiple features at the same time to support this. In fact, there's a hidden feature not in the GUI called Dynamic Resolution Scaling. Render scale. Not that one. Here, dynamic render scale. This is a very beta feature, and it's not in the GUI for a reason, but what this does is if you if you force enable it via, via C, CVARs, it attempts to maintain your frame rate, but automatically changing your resolution up and down like other games do. You see a lot in console. And if you ever watch the Digital Foundry video, this is what DRS is. For, for some reason, Blizzard called it dynamic render scale instead of dynamic resolution scaling. But that's just because they, I guess they wanted it to match the, their, their verbiage on the slider. But basically what that option does is literally automatically moves this slider up and down based on your performance. The reason it's beta is because it's unfinished. It's very... It kind of works on some hardware, but on other hardware, it actually works terribly. Like... It's something that needs to be tested across a wide variety of hardware and machines and video drivers. And it's not, they haven't done that yet. So, like, if you really want to go, go like, super cutting-edge experimental and enable that, be prepared that it might actually not work very well. Or it might work well. Like, it really depends. I tested on my machine, and it, from what I found, it has a slow response time to how well it works. Like, uh, if my FPS drop, it takes too long to compensate to, pre to prevent the drop. And that's something you'll see a lot in like console video games. Console video games, especially, rely heavily on DRS. And I mean heavy. And you'll see, like, like I said, if you watch a Digital Foundry video, they'll talk about DRS in almost every video. Where it's like, they'll say the game has a target resolution of 1440p, but can go as low as 720p uh, in bad spots. That's basically saying the DRS will lower the resolution to 720p to keep it at 60 FPS. But when you're not, not, not in areas that are bad, it raises up to as high as 1440p, etc. That's DRS. And while it does support it, kind of. And DRS also uses the target FPS slider. This tells it what your target is. So it actually controls two options, one that's visible and one that's secret. So I dived into that. This I already explained. These don't affect the performance. I want to get into these because Blizzard reworked this in a way that's confusing the players. And a lot of players don't know what these are. And I see players turning them off and not realizing that turning them off actually hurts performance in most cases. Basically. This is what replaced being able to choose between DirectLX 11 and DirectX 12, or Metal Legacy versus Metal. Blizzard, instead of making it, made it like a use old versus use new, like a all or nothing, they made it, they broke it down. Like, basically, if you turn off uh, this option, you're probably, or, or this option, maybe one other option, I'm not sure how it works exactly. But if you turn off enough of these, you actually drop the DirectX 11 versus DirectX 12, or Metal Legacy versus Modern Metal. Because this is, this is what replaced being able to choose which engine you're using. It's checkboxes that choose which engine features you're using. But generally speaking, any of these you turn off, you're turning off an, uh, a feature that's actually giving you performance, which is the opposite of everything up here. Everything up here is like turning it on, cost performance, I want to emphasize here that turning it off costs performance. But also, it's buggy. But that pretty much covers most of the graphics options that I wanted to cover. So anyways, this is my deep one-hour deep dive on graphics settings, where I actually nerded out a bit and explained things 
more than you probably needed them to be explained. And a lot of you are probably going to comment that you're not even going to watch this because it's too long, but it is what it is. This is a nerd channel, so I wanted to go into graphic settings in a detail that most don't cover and hope that was helpful to some of you in understanding the engine a bit better, as well as explaining some of the engine bugs that a lot of people don't even know about. In fact, there's more engine bugs I know about, but they don't apply here. But anyways, I think I'm going to leave it at that. And thank you for watching. And please keep coming back to this channel for more performance tips, add-on tips, or just game tips in general, because I will talk about things like that too, something time to time, you know. I do have game tip videos that aren't technical. It's a, it's a wild channel overall. So please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.